What is going on guys? Matt Kelly here. A little bit of a different episode. Not out in the boat, not restoring any, 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 any boats in particular right now. Just thought I would do a bit of a Q&A episode. I've been uh, collecting all the questions that people have sent me on my Twitter account, Instagram account, uh, on the comments of the YouTube account, and also on Facebook. And I thought, um, you know, I try to answer a lot of them in the videos that we make, but in many cases, um, they're just sort of those, those sort of like trip videos or vlogs. So why not just go and answer answer a bunch of the questions that have been asked directly to me in a, in a Q&A format. Never done this before, but figured that, hey, if um, if you guys have questions, they may as well be answered. And a um, good way for, um, for me to shoot another video and, and keep you guys up to date on what's going on for me. So, um, like I said, this is from any, ch any channel. Um, I've actually collected them in my notes on my phone over a period of a couple of months. So um, I don't even know where these questions have come from. So I apologize for that. In future, I will keep track of that. But um, let's get into it. First question. Your YouTube channel uh, mostly uh, includes you using spinning reels. Do you use bait caster overhead reels? Um, yeah, good question. Um, so the TLD... 25, the big Shimano reel that I've been using, as I did in a previous video not too long ago. That's a new reel to me. That's sort of, it's more game style. Um, I really don't know how to use it yet. I certainly know that I, I'm, not, I'm not casting it. I'm just dropping it to the bottom or letting the bait sort of drift out in that sort of um, bait runner mode by dropping the drag right off. Um, I've just always used spinning reels. I did get a bait caster, quite a good one, when I was um, when I was quite young for a Christmas present from my parents. And I, I did use it a lot, but I got those just messy, messy bird nests. And I, to be honest, never I used it probably on five or ten trips as a kid and just never mastered it. And so I got to a point where I just went... To me, it just wasn't worth the learning curve. Now, to be fair, that was from a time that was pre-YouTube. It was when I didn't really know anyone else that fished. So it was quite hard to learn how to do it. I remember actually going to a library and borrowing a library book uh, that explained how to use different types of fishing reels. And experimented a little bit, um, but never got good at it. Now, in saying that, there are so many tutorials now. I actually know, sort of academically, how I could loosen a bird's nest if I got one now, and roughly how to prevent myself from getting them in the future. So I do want to learn how to do it, and I want to learn from someone who knows what they're doing. That would be ideal. Um, but at this stage, just spinning reels are the best for me in that you get quite heavy gear. I can cast them with, with good, relatively good distance, and they work well for me. So that's, that's why I use those spinning reels. The big overhead reels are great for that sort of game fishing style. Those big sharks, it's amazing for. So I'll keep using that one and, and hopefully get better at that. And um, and we'll see. The other one I've never tried. I've never tried fly fishing. So that's another one to add to the list of things to do. Um, in my trip that I did with uh, Sammy Hinsky and Andy McGrath from BCF, um, you saw me uh, out with them, and Sammy hooks onto quite a big. Uh, tuna with um, with his fly fishing rod off the front of the boat. That was something that was very interesting for me because I got to actually watch someone who knows what they're doing, like do the casting motion and actually, uh, well, a get it into the that, that group of fish, that school that was hitting the surface, um, and just with that one to one gear ratio, wind in a, a pretty substantial fish. Cool experience to see. So um, I do want to learn how to do that one day. Would love to do that in sort of fresh water and go for those fish that everyone else goes for. That would be an awesome experience, but certainly not something I'm chasing at the moment. Um, really focused on what I'm doing right now, which is getting good locations and catching good fish. So I'll keep doing what I'm doing because it's working for me at the moment, but very, very keen to explore other types of fishing in the future. Next question. Um, you've had a few boats in the last year. That's true. Uh, what boats have you owned? Okay, um, so, what boats have I owned? Well, it's, the question here is what boats my parents owned because in most cases, the boats I've had growing up were the boats my parents bought. So the first boat that we ever got when I was a kid was a, um, well, actually, actually, if we're gonna go right back, when I was first born, my dad had a, a Hobie catamaran sailing boat, um, but obviously I was way too young to ever know that boat. I think they sold it when I was one or two years old. So I guess technically it was in the family uh, when I was alive. So he had that, dad grew up into sailing, so heavily into sailing. When we we moved to the water, when I was about, gosh, we about 12, um, he bought us a, um, uh, it was like, it's like a nine foot uh, polypropylene boat, like essentially plastic boat. We had a 2.2 horsepower Mercury on it, a really old one. I'll try and dig up a photo to include here if I've got one. Um, but we had that for a good few years. That was sort of my introduction into boating. Um, he 
bought a 28 foot Mustang sports cruiser that we had for a couple of years. I uh, eventually sold that, um, but off the back of that, we pulled the, a tender, which was a, like a two and a half meter Aqua Pro uh, rigid bottom inflatable. So uh, we had originally a 3.3 horsepower Mariner on that, I believe. And, um, and eventually I ended up putting a six horsepower from the Tinny on it. And that was an, an amazing little fun boat to have my first introduction really into inflatable boats, which was cool. Um, so we, I had that for, we sort of played around with that for a couple of years. Eventually, when I was in high school, uh, we got the 3.7 meter CJ Tinny, which I would have spent thousands of hours in. That boat was something that I just absolutely loved. It was a boat that I've, I've fished everywhere locally in. I've done so much in. You guys have seen a lot of the videos with that Tinny in, um, in my channel, uh, right up until I started off the boat restoration projects. Um, so that started with a six horsepower Yamaha when, when we were kids. And then I eventually, some 10 years later, bought the 25 horsepower Mercury Sea Pro, which went on that boat. So again, like that changed the way the boat performed completely made it a viable boat to go long distances and, and sailing yak and I actually took that one down to Logan River which was a, a ridiculous trip did like 80 something kilometers round trip in one day uh, to make that video so ridiculous distance but um but a boat that I like, just thoroughly enjoyed. Um, the thing I like about those tinnies is they're virtually indestructible. You can do so much with them. They're super versatile. You don't have to worry about getting bait on them or fish guts or anything. They just you just take them anywhere. It's they're just amazing. So um, had uh, just awesome memories of the the CJ. Um, bought the Yoltcraft, which was the boat that made up the first restoration project, which there's like five or six videos on this channel uh, restoring that one. Ultimately sold that one about a year after restoring it. And the latest boat that I've obviously had that I've worked on is um, is the, the the half cabin, the four and a half meter, um, yeah, half cabin project, which has been a really, really cool boat to work on. So I did the restoration video, had the motor completely rebuilt. That's got a 50 horsepower Yamaha on it. It was about a 1980s half cabin hull. So very old Australian trailer boat style hull um, with uh, that Yamaha motor, which I'm starting to learn now is like, if there's one thing it is, it's incredibly reliable. It's not as smooth as a modern four stroke. It's a bit rough. Um, it doesn't idle nicely, it's loud, it's smoky. Uh, there's a lot of things that you could fault it for, but it's reliable. Um, I've had it running for many, many hours straight, and, and since getting that rebuild done when I first bought it, it's been a pretty phenomenal engine to, to have. So that's the list of boats that I've had. Where do I want to go from here? I want to go bigger, I want to go Flybridge Cruiser, just something something that we can spend overnight or a couple of nights on. I've got the baby now, so we, you know, I certainly couldn't, wouldn't be able to take the half cabin out overnight comfortably with the, the family, uh, unless we went camping, but that's sketchy with a newborn baby, right? Um, so I want to get into something a bit bigger, ultimately, but that requires high cost, it requires a lot more time and effort, especially getting something old to then rebuild. And, um, and to take something out like that, you really need professional help when you're going for the restoration project. So that's something that I would like to do, but for now, happy with what I've got and um, continuing to experiment with what, we're, with what we've got, right? It's, it's, a, it's an awesome boat in a good spot, so I love it. If you catch any species of fish, what would you catch? Cool, cool question. Um, I've caught a lot of like brim, whiting, flathead, squire, um, a lot of fish that you can get fairly easily around the coastline because that's where we've always fished. We've always had small boats, so it's always been easy to catch to fish around the coastline. Obviously, in the last couple of years, a lot more sharks, uh, reef sharks, hammerhead, shovel nose, which are actually rays, um, stingrays, heaps of them. Um, there's a lot of a lot of fish that we've caught sort of near near the coastline a bit easy. I want to get to those pelagics, those mackerel, those tuna. I would love to ultimately get into marlin, sailfish, all that stuff, but that's going a long way offshore. Certainly not there yet. Um, for me right now, it's about getting confident in the new boat. When I'm confident in the new boat, I know that in Morton Bay, the area we live, I know I'll be able to get across to, I mean, I've got taken the new boat to Peel Island, to Stratty. I would love to get it to Morton. If I can get it to Morton, I know that I can effectively chase big fish. And by big fish, I mean, like, go for good mackerel, go for good tuna, right? That's something that I would love to do. I've, I've never gone north of, of sort of those who know the area of Cleveland up towards Bruton River. I know that there's, a, there's some sketchy stuff there around a the chemical leakage, but ultimately I want to go up there and do threadfins, threadfins like salmon. That would be a pretty interesting experience. I know they're quite common around there. So there's a lot of fish that I want to catch in this local area, but getting more into pelagics and more into those, those real hunting fish would be pretty sick. That's my plan. Now, in saying that, there's 
fish species from all around the world that I'd love to get into. Like, uh, I, I see around the Australian coastline people catching things like GTs, giant trevally. Like, that's something that I would love to do. So ultimately, that is the plan to get into those, those bigger, bigger, heavier, more interesting species. But for now, you know, just getting confident in the boat so I can go out and, and hunt down those those mackerel and tuna. It's something I'd love to do in the bay. We're in, we're in a great spot for it. And um, I think the boat's capable. I've just got to get more comfortable with what it is, where it can go, how it operates in different weather conditions, so that if the weather does turn, I know what to do and I know how it handles. So that's the plan. Next question. Are you coming to the USA? Okay. Um, I've been to the USA a lot. So I actually worked in San Francisco for a couple of years for a technology company. Um, didn't fish while I was over there in that time, but I've spent quite, a, I've probably been out to the US on, I don't know, six, seven, eight return trips over the past few years. Um, usually for work, for conferences or for events, and, and obviously when I, when I lived over there. Um, I do want to fish the US. I've, I've never thought about freshwater, about bass fishing. I've never, actually, I've never thought about ice fishing. So look at like Northern Europe, look at Canada. Um, obviously in the US as well, very viable, but that's something that I would love to do. I would love to get into ice fishing and at least learn about it because I've only, I've only been in snow like twice in my life. So, so seeing snow and trying ice fishing would be a pretty interesting experience. There's a lot of fishing I'd love to do through the US, through middle America. There's just a huge amount of stuff that I can't, I can't do or haven't done um, that would be cool. Also, like you can't pass like Florida for shark fishing. So, you know, there's a million YouTube videos with sharks off, off the Florida coast. That's something else I would like to, to experiment with. Um, am I coming to the US? Sure, like every year. Have I fished there yet? No, would I like to? Yes, so that is the plan. Um, is that your house in the videos? You must be rich. No, it's not my house and no, I am not rich. Um, the house you see is my parents' house. They live on the water. I live in the city. I think I've shown my apartment in one video. I'll have to go back and check that. Um, when I was leaving to go on a fishing trip, I live in, in Brisbane city. My parents live on the south side of Brisbane. Um, they've worked very hard to get what they have, which is cool. Um, post more videos. Sure. Um, that's... Yeah, that's one I get quite a lot. Um, so the reason I only post every few weeks on this channel is because it's a hobby for me. It's fun. It's never been built as a business. I don't plan on monetizing my videos to any massive degree or making a lot of money from YouTube. As demonstrated, right? It's not a big channel. Um, I haven't promoted product or anything like that because it just doesn't make sense to. It's not what I started this to do. What I started this to do was I was out fishing for fun. I was restoring boats for fun. I figured why not capture the process, capture the experience because it's something that I like to do and others might enjoy watching it. Now, I don't profess to be an expert at any of these things. In fact, truth be told, I know nothing about restoration projects. I've, everything I've learned is from YouTube. I am not a carpenter. I am not a, a boat builder. I know nothing about fiberglassing. I, don't, I know actually nothing about painting, right? Everything I've learned is from my dad who knows a little bit. Again, he's also works in a, has worked in a professional role his whole life. Um, but we've just picked up things as we go. So. Because of that, I don't spend all day in the boat. In fact, I haven't been out in the boat in like three weeks. Uh, I'm getting, starting to get a bit antsy. I really want to get out there. Um, it's, it's a hobby for me. It's something that's fun, something that I enjoy. And as long as I enjoy it, then I want to share it because that's a fun experience. And, and creating content is something that I'm pretty passionate about and I do also enjoy doing. So that's really why I make this, this channel, why I make these videos. A lot of people have sort of ripped me apart in the comments on some of the restoration videos because I've done it wrong or, you know, you should have done it this way or you should have used this product or you should have. Oh, there's so many reasons why you could do that. And my response is always, well, generally fairly similar. It's e either thanks so much for helping out, for providing your insight, for sharing your perspective, because that's actually useful, right? Not only do I then learn how, and potentially how to, how to fix something, but also how to, how to like do it pro properly or better in the future, it also helps other people who are watching learn that. But if people are ripping you one just for the sake of it, then I've gotten to a point where it's almost like, that's great, you might be an expert and that's fine, I look forward to seeing your videos. Inevitably, the haters are the ones who have no videos on their channel are not active and just like ripping other people apart. So that's fine, you try to ignore that as best as you can and not get too disheartened. There was a point in time where I did actually remove some of the videos, um, well, I'll make them private on my channel because I was just getting sick of just people with dumb, dumb, like aggressive feedback. And I thought after a while, I was like, you know what? 99% of people who watch these videos like them and I'm getting good feedback. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep them live, but um, that's a hard call to make when you get those occasional ones that are pretty brutal. So the decisions that I've always made are just keep doing what you're doing. The ones who like it will like it, the ones who won't, won't. 
and that's fine. Um, hopefully, if the majority like it, then then whatever. I should just keep doing it. So that's why I've been that's why I've been doing it, and I actually have fun with it, which is why I'm just creating content. Uh, we take photos when we go fishing anyway, right? I think most people do. If you're taking photos, you may as well share them. So that's always been my perspective, and I, I just enjoy doing it. It's a hobby. Um, I own my own company, um, so this is a, a space that's shared between me and a friend's company, and and it's and that's sort of why we. This is where I spend, you know, 99% of my waking time, right? When I'm awake, I'm usually here. I'm usually working to build something awesome, which is why I can't always be focused on the YouTube channel and why I'm not making, releasing, you know, three, four, five videos a day as much as I would like to. Different priorities at this point in my life. So it's uh, why we do what we do. But I love it anyway. Um, you should put your stuff on Facebook. I've actually got a Matt Kelly Fishing Vlogs Facebook page. Um, haven't really promoted it. Got a few likes on there organically, which is great. And a few, people, few of you guys have messaged me through it because you just discovered it. So I appreciate that. Um, it's a lot of work goes into building it's a, those different social channels. So there's a Twitter account and a Facebook page. Um, and then I just use my personal Instagram account for anything sort of fishing related. It's certainly not something that I want to push. If you guys see value in it, then I'm more than willing to put time into things like the Facebook page, the Twitter account, Instagram account, and I'm spending more time in the YouTube comments. But really, it's up to how you guys interact. If you want it, well, I'll do it. If you don't, I won't. It's as simple as that. I think for many people, you know, this is just another channel to go and subscribe to. And if I post a new video, you might watch it or you might not, and that's fine, right? I don't have a big audience, but I mean, I'm not pretending like I do. It's, um, it's just something it's fun for me so if people enjoy it I'll do whatever makes sense right that's sort of the way this works and and yeah I do it because it's fun the next question uh, do you want to collaborate with any other youtubers okay that's a cool question so I would personally love to there's no reason why I wouldn't do that to be totally honest um, there's you know Sammy Hinsky uh, who took us out on that big pelagic trip um, only probably a month ago now um, He's got a pretty big uh, Instagram audience and he's building his YouTube account and he's, doing, he's actually doing really well. Um, he's just a gun at what he does, an amazing fisherman. I would love to get more into working with guys like that, with guys that I can learn a lot from. Because to be honest, to me that's as good as creating the content, as good as the content opportunity is. If I can go out and learn from someone who knows what they're doing and, uh, and fish with them, that's epic. If we can make videos at the back of that, even better. So. I would love to. In terms of other people I would like to collaborate with, there's all a bunch of guys that I subscribe to and I follow and I watch all the videos of. Um, in you know, Black Tip H, he like just I always watch his videos and go, just his his ability to find fish blows my mind. Um, and I admittedly he's fish is an amazing place in the world. Um, but he's just always able to find great stuff. So that's pretty pretty cool for me. Um, I also look at the guys in the Guggen squad. So that's that American bass fishing style. Uh, John B, Perrick, Flair, um, Lunkers, like these guys uh, like fish a really, really cool style and basically worked out, which I find super interesting, worked out that by working together, they build a better, more engaged audience with each other. So I think that's cool as well. So, um, you know, would love to ultimately do that. I'm a long way from being anywhere in, in the air there territory. Um, you know, like I say, this channel is a hobby at best. So would I like to? For sure. Is it something I see happening in the short term? Definitely not. And I'm sure they definitely wouldn't want to wouldn't want to work with me either. I'm a long way from being valuable to them with um, with the audience size that we've got. So not quite there yet, but one day soon, definitely will. Um, that's all I. That's all the the questions that I took down, all the notes that I made. Um, if you have any questions at all or you want to chat, feel free to send me a message. Anyway, you can find me, but YouTube comments are obviously the easiest and the ones that I get the notifications for on this phone 24 hours a day. So it's where I see most of them. Thanks so much for, um, for all the support you guys give as well. Um, I get so many positive comments and I try not to let the negative ones sort of sway what I do. The positive ones are what keep us going. So when you, even just that thumbs up or like great work or like the videos, all that stuff really helps me to go, I'm gonna keep making more of these videos because it's fun and interesting and motivating. And if people get value, there's even more reason to do it. So I'm gonna do more of that. I actually really enjoy making them. So that's, just makes sense. It's just make, as long as it's valuable to you guys, I'll keep doing it. So uh, thank you. I've got aspirations to do a lot more in the short term. I want to do an overnight trip in the new boat. I want to go explore some new locations, some better locations, some more locations. Um, other people that I want to take out fishing as well. So friends, family, uh, even just a couple of viewers. So there's there's a, a bunch of collabs I want to do locally. Um, different styles of fishing. I actually want to do more like you know where we still, where we keep the boat on, on the pontoon there. You guys have seen it in basically every video that I've posted. 
there's a lot of fishing that goes on around there. Um, and I hear about a lot of people who catch things on plastics, on lures, around the canals there. Um, gosh, everything from mangrove jack to big flathead to brim to, um, you know, you hear about the occasional big fish. So I want to I wanna learn more about that. I want to do more of that localized fishing. Um, it also means any weather condition you can continue to fish. So whether it's kayak, whether it's small boat, that's another thing I'm going to do. So a lot of plans for me in the short term, but like I say, it's just a matter of time. So I'll keep trying to drop drip out these, these videos weekly if I can. Um, and yeah, I'll keep pushing if you guys like it. So thanks so much. Uh, thumbs up as always. I appreciate all of the support you guys give and I'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers. See you later.